Welcome to this three-part mini-series centered around deep listening, the life work of composer, musician, writer, and humanitarian Pauline Oliveros. I'm Sharon Stewart, a creator of Soundworks, musician, researcher, poet, and deep listener. Welcome to the third episode, Deep Listening Performance Scores with Lisa E. Harris. Creating, generating, serious play. These are all aspects of deep listening that disturb the hierarchies between musician and non-musician, between composer and performer, between performer and audience, reminding us of the ever-present possibility of opening up to and engaging with the sounds and movements of daily life in a way that blurs the distinctions between everyday activities and making art. In the article, Listening to Deep Listening, Reflection on the 1988 Recording in the Life Work of Pauline Oliveros, written for the Journal of Sonic Studies in 2012, I talked about creation and sonic interaction as follows. In my experience at three international deep listening retreats, besides movement, performance of text scores, and dream work, we were engaged from the very first day in creating, creating scores, creating interpretations on the fly with small groups, creating and preparing performances over a period of a few days. We engaged with each other, with our environment, with ourselves, in the struggle to give form to a sounding event with the materials at hand, while applying the principles of deep listening we were assimilating. The act of listening and creating and performing becomes an act that reveals our expectations, reveals our aesthetic judgments and choices and those of communities in which we function. Alongside the interactivity of participating in one of the scores of Oliveros herself, participants also take part in creating works that follow the same possibilities of interaction. I quote from Oliveros's 1998 work, Roots of the Moment. Quote, My music is interactive music. It is interactive in the sense that participants take a share in creating the work rather than being limited to expressively interpreting pitches and rhythms. I have composed the outside forms, the guidelines for ways of listening and ways of responding. These forms and guidelines with appropriate application give the participants a creative opportunity to compose and perform simultaneously in collaboration with me and to expand their musicianship." End quote. For her book, Sounding Out, Pauline Oliveros and Lesbian Musicality, published in 2008, Martha Mockus interviewed Oliveros in 1997 and 2005, asking the question at some point, so for you, how does music have an ethical trajectory? Oliveros answered, quote, well, it's very important to me to help facilitate creative process in others to empower people to understand and use sound as a force in their lives and in their realization of who they are, creatively and spiritually. And in this way, you build community. You build a community of understanding based on sounding and listening, but it's not about controlling and regulating. It's a different approach, very different. End quote. For episode three of the podcast series, Sounding Places, Listening Places. I interviewed deep listening practitioner, interdisciplinary artist, creative soprano, and composer Lisa Harris. And here she talks about the impact deep listening has had on her. Coming into a deep listening practice and formalizing it has um, just been the gift that keeps on giving for me. It's like just a pivotal turning point and my development as a person, you know, as an artist, but also as a person. And I was introduced to deep listening by a friend in Houston who was a mentee of Pauline Oliveros. His name is Dave Dove. And I was introduced to Pauline's work and deep listening a couple, a few years before I actually met Pauline and Ioni. And 
When I was introduced to the work, again, very similarly to the experience I had in reading Octavia Butler's novels, I felt um, validated, seen and heard, and um, encouraged, I think is very, very um, the, the most important. I felt encouraged. What Pauline showed me particularly in her work and her dedication to community and her dedication to study. It fortified me as a student. I am a proverbial student. I am, I want to learn all the time. And um, there came a point in time in my academic career where I was just, as a performer, there was um, a choice to be made. Well, it's like, okay, well now you have to go and perform. It was kind of like one or the other. And, and, that, and that all depends on industry as well. So this gave me, coming into deep listening gave me a chance to, to, to circle back around and see like the things that I'm doing in my private life that sustain me, that are kind of like my restorative practices, my, my needs that I really use to go out and then translate into some other form of energy to perform and give to someone else. These things can just be where they are we can actually take out the translation because there's also an audience um and a need like it's just not helpful for you it's it's helpful for everyone um and that being a part of a community really let me like expand in that that that's that's ex that's the same feeling that happened in the hurricane when i turned off my computer to meditate and i had to turn it back on to say okay now let's everyone meditate. This isn't something that gives you an advantage over someone else. It's about the sharing. And actually, the, pro the practice itself is rooted in the exchange. So that um, the receiving of information and the and the giving of information, that transmission, the way that Pauline the experiments and the studies and the etudes and the scores and the various ways and the writing in ways that she has just encouraged us to try different things to um, take that translation of language and not and traditional uh, music language and, and literacy out of the way that that can really stymie people from making sounds because they think I'm not a musician. I don't have access to this language. I can't read. I can't write. Those kind of limits are not true. She expanded my vocabulary as far as text-based scores. I'm a person that has been writing text forever and often felt like I needed to put that down. Like that's different than being a musician. That's different than being a composer. It's different than being a performer. And um, in Pauline's work, I just really, and with her guidance, with her um, example that I'm that she's given a lot of us, um, I felt really, really encouraged to just go deeper and find more ways. Lee is a prolific composer and creator. In the podcast notes here, you will find one text score Lee composed in 2017 for the Deep Listening Certification Program Sonic Meditation Sharing Event. The score is entitled Undocument It, a psychic declaration by Lisa E. Harris in support of immigration rights and human rights for all of humanity. For this episode, I had the joy of performing the score New Laughter with Lee, online and unrehearsed. You will hear that she's sitting in a big resonant workspace as the residency in Marfa, Texas, in the Rio Grande area. I hope the following brings a smile to your face. And of course, you are more than welcome to join in. Laughter is always the answer. Each listener or listening vessel sits in the listening vessel, which is yourself, your body, and listens for a question from the other listener. Each listener answers the question with a giggle or laugh, followed by another question. The questions are continuously asked, but laughter is the only answer. This piece ends when you can't laugh anymore, 
or approximately 15 minutes. So you can do this with yourself, with a partner, or your inner self, or your inner child, or your imagination, or your pet. Okay, so this is a piece that is entitled New Laughter. And this piece was commissioned for the inauguration of Pauline Oliveros Day in Houston, um, Houston, Texas on May 30th, 2019. So um, here's the piece. Okay, so I'll begin. What's the weather like there? <laughs> uh, when's the last time you climbed a tree? <laughs> oh, are you getting enough water intake? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been smiling? <laughs> oh, does yesterday count? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that tiny little puppy on the street the other day? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been dreaming lately? <laughs> what was his name again? <laughs> oh, oh, mm. um, mm. can I park here? <laughs> <laughs> how much how much did those jeans cost <laughs> oh. would you like something to drink <laughs> Did you arrive in Dallas? <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you we scaled that mountain? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Get the name of that big shot musician. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> Ever seen an alien? California? 
Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever tried singing underwater? <laughs> Does that sound a bit like a javelina? <laughs> Did you ever speak French backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a possibility of the next sonic boom? <laughs> <laughs> How many teeth do humans actually have? <laughs> <laughs> Day the day. into a teeny tiny little fish. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy climbing over the giraffe's neck? When did you say goodbye to your teacher? Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Does does fifty dollars cover it? <laughs> Is there a tractor in the room behind <laughs> you? <laughs> your eyebrows in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever put on only one sock? Until you like fell over? <laughs> <laughs> Where 
is your best dream? <laughs> when were you so lonely? that you couldn't tell anyone. <laughs> Is there a ghost in here? <laughs> <laughs> bells moving behind your back? Hear that? the first time you ever laughed. First, oh. laughter or crying? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. I feel better than I felt in, I think, a month. I just feel so great now. Thank you. After this high energy piece, Lee offers to play us some three and a third meter long chimes that she has recently found in Alpine, Texas, which she will be playing for two durational pieces of four hours each over the course of the coming 36 hours, including offering the black members of the community of Marfa the opportunity to come in for a sound bath. The piece she's working on is called Mountain Delta Waves. I'm actually here in, in Marfa and Marfa, Texas, and I bought this big 11 foot chime. Um, 
at an Alpine, which is a neighboring town, and uh, brought it here to work with in my sound studio. And I've been studying um, the landscape and uh, making drawings of the landscape and sonifying them and comparing them to brain waves. And so with this chime, I'd like to play for you some interpretations of uh, delta waves, delta brain waves. Just a little moment. You want to hear? That's a piece I'm working on here, um, Mountain Delta. And it's a, a little bit of a portrait, um, soft sculpture of the, of the mountains, the dream mountains. Thank you, Lee. And a big thank you to all of you for listening and participating with 
this deep listening podcast mini-series. <laughs>